In the next few videos, we're going to go over electrostatics. This video is going to start by looking at electrical charge. Electrical charge is something that we have all experienced within our lives, certainly with electrical devices and also in more simple methods. For example, if you take a balloon and you rub your head with the balloon, if you pull the balloon away from your head, you'll see your hair essentially move towards the balloon. The reason why that happens is because of the transfer of charge between your hair and the balloon that has occurred. Another common demonstration that is done in physics classrooms is taking a glass rod and rubbing it with silk. If you take a look at this diagram, you'll see how rubbing a glass rod with silk will leave the glass rod with a positive charge and the silk with a negative charge. If you then hang up that glass rod with a positive charge, you can bring another glass rod, which as you can see in this diagram, when you bring the two rods together, they'll actually repel each other. So another demonstration that charge exists. All right, so charge can be both positive or negative. The units that we have for charge are coulombs, which is denoted by capital C. This is another one of the basic SI units. Now, in terms of where charge comes from, they come from atoms, and within atoms, there are electrons and protons. Electrons and protons have the same magnitude of charge, which we call the elementary charge. The elementary charge is denoted by lowercase e, and it's equal to 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. So that means a proton has a charge of plus e, and an electron has a charge of minus E. And since when you're transferring charge, you can only transfer them in with electrons or protons, we can say that charge is quantized. They're always transferred in, in increments of E. So for instance, we can consider a few examples. Let's say we're looking at a chloride anion. Well, if we're looking at a chloride anion, Cl minus, we would say that it has a charge of negative one E. If we were to take a look at another ion, for instance, a calcium cation, we would say that it has a charge of plus two E. So the charge that any atom or object has is always some integer multiple of E. This smallest quantity of charge possible. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is conservation of charge. Conservation of charge is fairly straightforward and essentially says total charge cannot change. So for instance, when you take a glass rod and you rub it with silk, the glass rod takes on a positive charge and that's because the electrons were transferred to the silk. So even though the glass rod lost charge, the silk gained that charge, so there was a net no change in the total charge. Conductors and insulators. Conductors contain free flowing electrons and allow current to freely move through them. And this is essentially looking at metals. So often when we're looking at electrical devices, we're using metals to conduct electricity. For example, copper wire is used extremely often in electrical devices to allow current to flow through it. Insulators is essentially the opposite of conductors. They do not allow free electrical charges to flow through them. So that means if an insulator gains charge, that charge will be held on for a very long period of time. And insulators are non-metals, so essentially the opposite. Metals are conductors, non-metals are insulators.